I'm a reformed, messy person. I would constantly misplace things growing up, keeping my parents waiting in the car while I ran around the house looking for my shoes. My dad used to say that I would lose my head if it wasn't attached. This appears to be my default setting, that if left to nature and without a process, my home would inevitably turn into a pigsty. But there's a way around this. By paring down our things, setting systems in place, controlling the flow of new stuff and creating routines, my fellow messy friends, we can finally get our shit together. But first, a quick message. Consumerism is destroying America, and our children are at risk. Every year, our young ones are being exposed to material objects that ruin their chances to experience the joy of less. That's why for every person who supports my videos on Patreon, I will take away one toy from a child. Together, we can make a difference. I'm only kidding. Support my videos on Patreon and get exclusive videos every month on minimalism, filmmaking, and get access to my personal vlog. Learn things like how to grow your audience and get a behind the scenes look at how I make my films. As a former messy person, I have to admit that I hate clutter. I'm not obsessive about it, but it was very easy for me to see the benefits once I did declutter. I was able to regain my time. I had more clarity. There wasn't this mounting chore in the back of my mind that I knew that I always had to take care of. And I also never lost my shoes again. But I had to come up with a process that I could stick to. These are the four steps that really helped me take control of the clutter in my home. Step one, get rid of your shit. You must have seen this one coming. Get rid of the unnecessary stuff that's in your home. As the size of the average American home has increased, tripling over the last 50 years, so too has the amount of stuff inside. The Boston Globe and LA Times have cited that Americans have over 300,000 items in their homes. Regardless of the number of things in your home, whether it's a thousand or a hundred thousand, most of us have too much shit. We've got too much stuff in our house. And it helps to take a look around to see the things that maybe we haven't gotten value out of or any joy from over the past six months to a year. And if we're honest with ourselves, we can start to pare away and let go of some of those things. Take it one weekend at a time, one room at a time, one closet or drawer at a time. The most difficult part is getting started, but you'll build momentum with each thing you get rid of. Here's a helpful tip. Reduce the number of surface areas in your home. Humans are very simple creatures. If we see a surface, we will put something on it. Every unnecessary table, desk, or dresser that you own will eventually get filled with stuff. By minimizing these areas, you'll naturally reduce clutter, or at the very least, isolate it to a few places. Step two, systematize your things. The magazine version of a minimalist home is beautiful, but it doesn't always depict reality. In the real world, we have kids with toys and hobbies that require closet space. You need to set up a system, and if you haven't done it, then this stuff will never stay organized. Use bins and sandwich bags to store cables and electronics. Hide your phone chargers with a small binder clip and gaff tape. I use bins and shelves to organize my camera gear. I hide my lights and C-stand underneath the bed. I keep a spot in my sock drawer for my everyday carry. And since we don't have much space, we use this door rack to hide Natalie's shoes. All right, so confessions of a minimalist. Natalie and I moved into this apartment over a year ago, and there's one thing that I have been putting off organizing since we moved here, and it's been getting worse every single month, and that is my toiletry drawer. So, as you can see, this drawer is just straight chaos. There are things that I clearly don't need, like this empty bag of floss. Uh, I have an assortment of razors. Here we have a bottle of melatonin with a bag. I don't know why the bag is necessary. I wanna say that it's not all my fault, so Nat, has taken it upon herself to collect these mini shampoo bottles from hotels that we stay in. There are a lot of shampoo bottles. <laughs> I'm not kidding. There are more. I'm not even, I'm not done yet. There's more. <laughs> what the fuck, Nat? Oops, look at that. And I broke it. 
That, this is the easy way to declutter. You just break Natalie's stuff and then she has to get rid of it. We might have to get rid of that, Nat. I kind of feel bad. I don't, I feel like I shouldn't feel bad about that. Uh, so the idea is here, there is a lot of stuff, stuff that I clearly don't need, stuff that I do and that I need to organize. But the fix is super easy. Simply add a kitchen utensil organizer. As you can see, now we have everything in order. Everything is nice and organized. There is no confusion about where things need to go. I will be honest, I suggested we do the same for Natalie's drawers and she said, no. She said, I like the chaos. She lives for it. Some people just want to watch the world burn. What are you gonna do? Here's what you need to know about yourself. You will always fall back to the path of least resistance. Your brain loves that which is easiest. So make things easy for yourself. Set up a system. Once you do, you'll be able to keep your home in order and cleanup time will be significantly reduced. Step three, control the flow of new stuff. Simply getting rid of your stuff isn't enough if you haven't addressed the problem at its source. You need to control the flow of new stuff that comes into your home every year. Cut off direct mail flyers and newspapers. Force yourself to hold off on purchasing something for a week. Cancel your Amazon Prime membership if you really can't resist the urge. You can also control your temptation to buy new things by curating your social media feed. Keeping up with the Joneses has moved to Instagram. So only follow people that are adding value to your life. If you find that you're constantly comparing yourself to others online, then think about taking a social media detox or scheduling your screen time each day. It's important to replace the negative activities and bad habits. Instead of browsing social media, you could read a book. Instead of watching Netflix, you could go to the gym. When you identify the things that are most important in your life, you can invest more time into those areas. You'll naturally feel less of a pull to buy new stuff. And the final step, create routines. Create morning and nighttime routines that help you keep things in place. Make your bed in the morning, clean up your kitchen and do the dishes before you go to bed pick up after your kids or girlfriend. The small things you do every day will make a big difference. If you wait for a big cleanup once a month, then you'll constantly be living in a state of chaos. And that's no way to live. All right, guys, I hope you learned a thing or two about how to declutter your home in this video. If you want to support this ad-free YouTube channel, you can do it on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash mattdiavella to get exclusive videos on minimalism, business, filmmaking, and much more. Thanks for watching.